Hey everyone, I hope you guys are enjoying Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak and whichever platform you're choosing to play it on. And today we're going to be checking out the fact that as part of the release of Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak in PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, Xbox One, and PC Windows, Capcom decided to put out a brand new user survey where you're essentially able to give them feedback as some of the things and some of the decisions, the launch decisions that they decided to do for these brand new consoles. And we're going to be going over some of the questions that they asked for players as you should be able to give them some feedback and see where they take things from the future, heading into the future. However, at the back end of the survey, they begin to ask questions regarding the next generation of Monster Hunter games and monsters that should be added heading forward. And you can actually give them feedback yourself to see what it is they end up doing, which I found fascinating. So we're going to be talking about at the back end of the video as we get through uh, part of the survey questions that I think are certainly worth responding to. And that is because a lot of players, specifically when it came to the release of uh, Sunbreak on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC Windows, they were complaining for multiple things, specifically the pricing. I made a video regarding that. Link in the description below if you didn't necessarily catch it, where players were just not too happy regarding the pricing, especially since it was a, a later release than it was on the Nintendo Switch and PC Steam. Then there was the complaints after we found out that it was only launching up until the third free title update, so the fourth, fifth, and six free title updates will be launching at a later date. I made a separate video discussing just when that date is gonna be, so check that out, link in the description below. And then more importantly, uh, players saw a lot of glitches, safe corruptions, problems, and plenty of situations on Xbox, PlayStation, and PC Windows that simply should have been addressed since the build that they're playing is actually coming from the PC Steam version of the game. Things that they should have addressed already, but they decided not to for whatever the case is. So there was a lot of feedback provided to Capcom that should have been addressed, but never was. And then these type of services where Capcom will listen to players. Uh, the survey periods will be starting from uh, the beginning of launch of Sunbreak on those consoles all the way to May 27th. So you don't have to rush out to fill it out, but I do suggest you do so at the end of the day. I'm gonna be leaving a link in the description below for you guys to fill out the survey and provide them all the feedback. I always repeat this when I'm talking about service, specifically to these type of mega corporations the more you provide information through feedback and surveys the more they're actually going to listen to you if you just yell into the void on social media twitter instagram you know facebook whatever the case is on a forum or discord or reddit that's not going to do anything they don't listen to those places they don't care about opinions there they do care about information provided in their surveys that's why i like to talk about it i say this from experience so believe me when i tell you you know they are paying attention whenever people give them type of feedbacks in these type of places. The first few questions are pretty straightforward, nothing too surprising. They ask things like, do you own Monster Hunter Rise or Sunbreak in whichever platforms or how, which version do you decide to buy, whether it's uh, immediately or do you decide to buy them together? Um, you know, where do you get any information from Monster Hunter Rise, whether it is you know, the Capcom Spotlight events, the digital media information, YouTube videos like this one, uh, social media pages, public ads, whatever the case is. They ask which version of the game did you decide to buy? Of course, you know, whichever one applies to you. Um, please select your Hunter rank uh, whenever you began to play Sunbreak on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC Windows. Remember, most players just needed to have cleared um, Serpent Goddess of Thunder to be able to play Sunbreak. So I think most players ended up doing that. They even had that like kill a hundred thousand, um, you know, uh, Nar uh, Narwa quest uh, event to be able to get extra rewards because they were trying to get players to be able to finish that quest so they could actually have full access to Sunbreak. So of course, that was beneficiary. Uh, they also ask, where do you get information for Rise and Sunbreak? Of course, once again, magazines, game media, YouTube, PlayStation official website, Xbox, whatever the case may be, certainly helps to mention channels like this one, but others ones as well. Uh, please select all the sources of information that you use. Similar question, but the same thing. Uh, please share your reasons for buying this game. You know, they talk about, do you like Monster Hunter? Do you like just Rice in general? Do you like the story? Um, it just released on consoles, Xbox, PlayStation, so you like that. The price was negotiable or reasonable. Plenty of reasons. Maybe you saw an influencer and stream it or play it. You know, whatever the case may be applicable for you. They ask a slew of interesting questions that I hadn't seen them ask before, even to Nintendo Switch and uh, PC Steam players, which revolve 
over on how satisfied you are with the game, whether it is the story, extremely satisfied, satisfied, somewhat satisfied, somewhat dissatisfied, dissatisfied, or extremely dissatisfied. Uh, they ask the same questions for the world view, which is interesting because that's not a very specific thing. The world view to me would mean just the entire Komoro village experience and being able to just see how the story develops. But of course, the story is separate. They have their own tap for that. They talk about the interesting gameplay. So that presumes wire bugs, palamutes, all of the new features that we expect, hopefully carry over to Monster Hunter Gen 6, but we don't necessarily know. They ask um, which one of those are like the game difficulty. Are you satisfied? Some are dissatisfied, whatever the case is. Uh, difficulty, again, varies, especially if we're doing end game content in Sunbreak. It varies because hazard quests are really true end game and special investigations are truly end game, but anomaly investigations and certainly master rank are not true end game. At the end of the day, where master rank used to be the true end game, now it isn't. They talk about the character designs. That's just pretty much the way the characters look. Are you cool with that? Maybe the story ones, but maybe not the character creator. They talk about the monster designs, which I would say extremely satisfied for myself since a lot of the monsters that they created specifically for Rise and Sunbreak are very varied and they look extremely different from one another. They also continue talking about environmental designs. So pretty much the maps, what did the maps look like? Are you happy with them? Are you not happy with them? The sounds and the music, I guess my only dissatisfaction is that some of the music that they decided to put in post launch for both Rise and Sunbreak are paid DLC. I think that music should be at the very least available, you know, in the game, but more importantly, it should be played whenever you are doing a quest, not just back in the town, but like if you're doing a quest and you paid for a song like three bucks or whatever it is, you should be able to hear that song, whatever the hell you want, wherever you are in the game. And for whatever reason, they don't let you do that. They talk about cutscene animations. Do you like them? Do you not like them? I think they're pretty good, but that's of course up to you. Cutscenes voice acting, which is something that they've decided to lean into a lot more since World and Iceborne. So I think that's a pretty good thing at the end of the day. Overall volume of content, and I personally wouldn't complain too much at the end of Sunbreak. Plenty of drops have been available. Maybe not a brand, brand new monster was introduced as part of DLC for Sunbreak. That would be my only real concern if you really want to talk about content, but for me, I'm personally satisfied at the end of the day. Now, this is one of the questions that they, of course, are going to get extremely dissatisfied responses, and that is paid downloadable content lineup. Any one of those free item packs or you know anything that became available for free was pretty much a bottom tier free drop when the paid DLC was really good stuff at the end of the day, and a lot of people were not too happy about that. So certainly let them know if that is how you feel. They talk about the price of the game, which of course varies from player to player. I've seen a lot of players in the Nintendo Switch side of things or even Steam side of things be very happy that they have been able to buy both Rise and Sunbreak for about 40 bucks. And that's been a pretty good deal for a lot of players. However, when it comes to PlayStation, Xbox, and PC Windows players, they are not happy that they had to play, especially PlayStation players, $40 for base rise and then another 40 for Sunbreak. So that's 80 bucks for a game that you're getting late content on and it already launched relatively late in this life cycle. So that's been a little bit of a bummer. Now, when it comes to Nintendo Switch players, you know, maybe they're happy with paying 40 or 50 bucks for both bundled but PlayStation players are definitely getting a raw deal. Maybe Xbox players who got access to rise base rise on Game Pass, they're not too concerned with it. Now that Sunbreak is available, you only have to pay the 40. But even then, that's a big ask for some players. They talk about support of high resolutions and high frame rates for Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 only. They're talking about either 4K 60, which it does, or about 1080p, which is roughly 960p at the end of the day, and 120 FPS, which is not actually 120 FPS capped, it's roughly around 80 to 90 frames and never really gets to 120. So, you know, at the cost of resolution, which is like, okay, to some players, but I'm not sure for everyone. They talk about the support of 3D audio, and that is only applicable for Series X, Series S, Windows, and PS5 only. And I can tell you that it really doesn't make that much of a big deal. Support 3D is one of those uh, gotcha, gimme type of like really weird things that they did for PlayStation 5 to sell headsets. And I tried it, it didn't really do anything for me, so I didn't really ever take it seriously. And they talk about implementation of adaptive triggers for PlayStation 5 only. That's another one of those things that they do to try to sell controllers. You've seen a lot of those criticisms levied to Nintendo for the Joy-Cons. For me personally, it just 
you know, that kind of adapted trigger stings doesn't really do anything. If anything, it takes away from the experience since your controller is constantly rumbling unnecessarily. And I don't need it to do that for me personally, but for you, it might be different. Uh, continuing forward, they mentioned how satisfied are you with the game? So you can actually rate it like a review zero to 10. Do you like it? Do you hate it for me personally as an 8.5, but you can do enter uh, you know, in, in the middle 8.5s. So I just did eight at the end of the day. Uh, will you recommend this game to a friend for me personally as i make videos about the game of course absolutely i'll recommend the game for everyone to check it out it's a monster hunter game and it's a good game so certainly you should be able to do that and here's one of the kickers before we get into the whole transition regarding next uh, the next generation of games please share what you will like or dislike about the game and this is where a lot of people have encouraged them if you don't like pay dlc if you don't like the lack of crossplay, if you don't like the lack of cross saves or anything along those lines then any other features that you're not happy with this is where you let them know believe me when i tell you they read this type of feedback and you should be able to provide them just enough of a reason to be able to maybe reconsider some of the things that they are doing now transitioning over this is the thing that probably a lot of people are excited to see is how interested are you in purchasing monster hunter titles in the future i will definitely purchase one i will likely purchase one i might purchase it i'll consider purchasing it i might not purchase it i like to not purchase it or definitely won't purchase a lot of them seem kind of like uh, whatever you know i might to likely i'm not sure i'll consider it might to consider is pretty much the same thing for me but of course that varies from person to person i'll definitely buy it or i'll definitely get a review code so i'll definitely be talking about it nonetheless they talk about please select all the series titles you have purchased whether it's rise on switch steam sunbreak switch steam world ps4 xbox one world on steam iceborne ps4 xbox one steam generations ultimate on switch generations 3ds stories on switch or steam stories one on 3ds or ios uh, Monster Hunter 3 or 4 or 4 Ultimate on the 3DS, try on the Wii or portable on the PSP. So certainly do let them know uh, which one of those you decided to pick up originally. Then they ask how many games you've decided to purchase uh, in the past few um, year for whether it is di digital or retail for whichever consoles. You can provide those details there, whether it is zero or up to 15. If you're buying 15 games a year, if you're probably like me, then you're probably more than buying more than 15. That's for sure. I'm certainly reviewing more than just 15 game in the zone. That's not including the ones that I buy and I just throw onto my shelf and I never end up playing, which I definitely want to, but I never do. Then they ask, please select which of the following devices you own, PlayStation 4, uh, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Series X, Series S, Nintendo Switch. It's funny that they divide Switch and Switch Lite, but you know, at the end of the day, I guess they just view it that way. Gaming PC or just a normal PC. A smartphone or a tablet, a Steam Deck, VR, Vive, MetaQuest, Valve Index, whatever the case is. And then they ask, of course, uh, please select your preferred games genre and list below. Select all that apply, whether it's racing, adventure, puzzle cards, music, rhythm, simulation, third party, first person shooter, role playing, multiplayer, online battle or a MOBA, action or action adventure, battle royale, sports, fighting, mystery, detective horror survivor or romance and adventure so certainly they do seem to be gathering information on like what it is that people own what it is that people have what type of genres you're into and maybe all that carries over to see what they end up doing with gen 6 of course there's been a lot of discussion on what that possibly could be all about mmorpg open world whatever they end up choosing to do hopefully is not you know just another boring open world game i would hate for them to do that but of course other players might be happy with just that but that's about all the information that i have for you guys today once again link in the description below for the full-on survey if you wish to check it out if you're brand new to my channel be sure to leave a like and subscribe hit the bell to receive notifications when the videos go up and as always thank you so much for watching see ya